Good evening. And welcome to Bristol Community College's Student Awards Ceremony. My name is David Tracy, Chairperson of the BCC Awards Committee, and it's truly my honor to welcome all of you here tonight. This evening, we're here to recognize students who have demonstrated exceptional academic growth and development, as well as those who have made significant contributions in service and leadership to Bristol Community College. At this time, I'd like to introduce my distinguished colleagues and presenters for this evening, for this evening's event. To my left, Dr. John Sprager, President of Bristol Community College. <laughs> Mr. James T. Grady, Vice Chair, BCC Board of Trustees. <laughs> Ms. Nancy Rosario, 89, uh, 1989 President of the BCC Alumni Association. <clears throat> Dr. Sarah Garrett, Vice President of Academic Affairs. Mr. Stephen Ozug, Vice President of Students and Enrollment Management. <laughs> Ms. Elizabeth McCarthy, Vice President of Resource Development. <laughs> Dr. Michael Vieira, Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs. <laughs> and to my right, Mr. Tom Grady, Professor of English and the Director of the Commonwealth Honors Program. Ms. Susan Bossano, Dean for Development Education. <laughs> Ms. Joanne Preston, Dean of Humanities and Education. <laughs> Mr. Barry McKee, Professor of Criminal Justice. <laughs> Ms. Phoebe Blackburn, Dean of Business and Information Management. Ms. Patricia Dent, Dean of Health Sciences. And Dr. Peter Schuyler, Dean of Mathematics, Science, and Engineering. I would also like to introduce the American Sign Language Interpreters for tonight, John Henry, and Elizabeth Nadalowski. And at this time, I'd like to acknowledge the members of the BCC Awards Committee. I couldn't do this by myself. I'd like to thank the committee for the tremendous support throughout the semester and their assistance in making this event possible. So their names are, please hold your applause to the end, Benjamin Bauman, Jacqueline Berry, Kathleen Burns, Suzanne Chadwick, Donna Davis, Phyllis Dickens, James Edmond, Joseph Frias is a student representative, also getting an award. Michael Geary, Karen Giglio, Eileen Harrington, Stephen Martin, Nancy Moxon, and another student, Del Thurston. So please give them a hand, and thanks for me. <clears throat> and many thanks to all the faculty and staff and students who submitted the nominations, over 150 to 200 nominations, and to our student volunteers for handing out programs and other volunteers. There are numerous faculty, administrators, and staff in the audience this evening, as well as members of the Board of Trustees who would like to recognize for their dedication and support to Bristol Community College and our students, and we thank you sincerely. At this time, I'd like to introduce the President, Dr. John Sprager, to give you some welcoming comments. Dr. Sprager. Well, thank you, David, and welcome, everyone, to Bristol Community College. What a great evening this is. Uh, we're very excited about uh, the awards we give out. I want to uh, say that you, to the uh, recipients that your hard work is uh, well-earned, and you've earned this recognition, and we're very proud of you. I did want to point out that I had a homemade flower made by one of our award winners, of Pagna Ern, and I thank you very much for that. Um, I also wanted to say that uh, we have a, a member of the uh, Board of Trustees, in addition to Trustee Grady with us, Trustee Cynthia Rose. Trustee Cynthia Rose, there she is. Thank you very much. Trustee, uh, the Board of Trustees, this seems to be vacation time. We have a number of uh, trustees that are out of the state, uh, but I assure you that the Board uh, wanted me to wish uh, all their, send all their best wishes to you uh, and their congratulations. 
they are very uh, great supporters of the college and they keep us moving uh, uh, with, their, with their advice and their guidance and their overall direction. I would also like to thank the Bristol County Savings Bank for sponsoring tonight's event. For many years, uh, Bristol County Savings Bank has been a strong supporter of Bristol Community College and tonight uh, is just another demonstration of the wonderful support that they provide. I'm very, very happy uh, to be associated with them and uh, our community endeavors and joint endeavors. Well, this is a time for excellence tonight and uh, I wanna move ahead so we can get uh, right to the awards. Uh, we're very proud of you and all of the great work that you've accomplished over the years that you've been here. And we look forward to greater steps uh, as you move on. Something I'll tell the graduates uh, next week uh, is, uh, but I want to tell you as well that when you, wherever you go, uh, you can go anywhere from BCC, but wherever you go, you'll always be taking BCC with you. This has been a great experience for you as well as uh, for us, and we're honored to have you as part of our BCC family. So thank you very much. And now it's my honor to introduce the Vice Chair of our Board of Trustees, Mr. James T. Grady. Mr. Grady. Thank you, Jack. President Sprague, distinguished faculty, staff, honored students, your families, friends, and guests, I am pleased to bring you the sincere congratulations and best wishes of the Board of Trustees. You deserve the representation, the, excuse me, the recognition you are about to receive this evening. Because you have proven that your hard work and dedication has accomplished its intended result. Good job, well done. I would like to take a brief moment to reflect on your obvious academic achievements. Let us not forget that success is a multifaceted concept. More than 150 years ago, the great poet from Concord, Massachusetts, Ralph Waldo Emerson, expressed this concept as follows. It's very brief. <laughs> what is success? To laugh often and much to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition. To know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. May your future travels be along this road to success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Chairman Grady. And now, Ms. Nancy Rosario, President of the Bristol Community College Alumni Association, will announce the Alumni of the Year. Nancy? Thank you and good evening. As the alumni of the nursing program at BCC and the current president of the Bristol Community College Alumni Association, it is my privilege to award the BCC Alumna of the Year Award to Teresa Terry Romanovich, class of 1971. <laughs> Terry has spent 27 professional years working for Bristol Community College, most recently as Dean of the New Bedford campus, starting with a handful of staff and 400 students. Terry was responsible for creating full service campus offerings for four full, four full degree programs and four certificate programs. Those offerings has expanded to 13 degrees and 13 certificate programs, which now serve approximately 1,700 students. Under Terry's leadership, Bristol Community College New Bedford campus provides a myriad of educational programs to the greater South Coast area. Throughout over a million in grant fundings, these programs address the unique needs of the diverse population of the region. 
Terry is very active in the local community. She has enriched the reputation and the visibility of Bristol Community College New Bedford campus by serving on area boards, including the Dune Directions of Southeast Incorporated, My Turn Incorporated, Downtown New Bedford Incorporated, New Bedford Economic Development Council, and the Greater New Bedford Career Center, as well as participating on the committee that focus on education and training. She is also an active member of the area's Chamber of Commerce. She has been hailed for her collaborative efforts and, and dedicated service. It is even greater tribute to Terry that this nomination was submitted by her staff. Thank you for this insight nomination and for giving us the opportunity to honor and thank Terry for all she has done for BCC and her community service since 1971. Thank you, Terry. Wow, you sure that was me? Um, first of all, I'd really like to uh, thank my staff because as they said, it's one thing to be recognized, but to be recognized by the people that work for you is uh, quite an honor. So please recognize the staff of New Bedford Campus, they're fabulous people. Well, congratulations, class of 2010. Welcome to my world as an alumni of this great institution. Welcome to a place that will lead you to the next chapter of your life. A place where dreams come true, where you can make a difference in your world. As Eleanor Roosevelt said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. I stand before you today reflecting back on the day I sat in your seat 40 years ago, which is hard to believe because I'm really only 29, so. <laughs> but seriously, I remember most what I, when I was sitting in your seat, the excitement I felt in realizing that I had been successful at something I never imagined would happen, being the first generation in my family to attend college, having a tough time in high school, and not knowing exactly what I wanted to be. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Well, now that's your day, and I stand before you, and I sat there and said I was a successful college graduate and I um, compliment you for achieving that same goal. So today, this is your day now to start the rest of your life. I'm a little jealous because you're at the beginning of your career and I'm at the end of mine, although some people here wouldn't agree. Um, it's been an amazing journey from your seat to mine, and I, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my journey to share with you um, a sample of what you have the possibilities to do. I started at BCC in 1969, a time of turmoil in our country with the Vietnam War, college sit-ins, strikes, drugs, booze, and rock and roll all around us. But it was also a time for unity when we, students and staff, worked together to build the educational institution that would withstand the hands of time, the very institution you're sitting in today. We did it all. We created a student senate. We had a school newspaper. We called it the bull sheet. We took over a classroom for a student lounge and painted it bright orange. Sorry for my fashion advisors who would never believe that. We carried books into the building and built a, a library. You guys know what books are, right? But anyway, we, did, we didn't have computers and iPods and iPads, but we had music, dancing, and friendship. And that all seemed to be enough. The staff and faculty of BCC opened my eyes to so many different things. The politics of the world. They taught me to question myself and to question the world. I learned to trust and believe in myself and others. But mostly, BCC gave me the courage to strive to be all that I would by giving back to others. The true sense of community that makes BCC what it is. I hope each of you sitting here today is taking some of that courage with you as you move forward. As many of you today, my journey only began at BCC. It continued on to UMass Amherst, where I finished my bachelor's degree. I was then ready and raring to go and teach uh, in the world and show others the value of education. I got my first job as a special education teacher in the Fall River Public School Department and was assigned to a classroom with individuals whose disabilities I never even knew existed. 
Those people changed my lives forever because they really taught me what it was like to overcome challenges, to be different. To have success and happiness mean nothing more than being able to feed yourself independently or to finish that puzzle that you worked on for hours. But the joys those kids gave to me was something I will treasure forever. They taught me that it is truly the small gains in life that make you tall. A few years later, I started re teaching reading at BCC, and then, as Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So I continued my, uh, my education and went back to school to Harvard where I got an advanced degree. Who would have thought? I tell you this because you too can go out there and surprise everyone. Keep them on their toes and it will keep you growing. So don't ever, ever underestimate what and who you can be. As Emerson eloquently sa said, what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. My time at BCC returned, and I've had many different jobs here. I've been the director of advisement. I've been the director of financial aid. I even stopped out and worked at the state level for the Massachusetts Community Colleges. But I returned back to BCC and began and came as the dean of the New Bedford campus. Each of these jobs gave me the opportunity to change lives, lives like all of you sitting here tonight. I've watched women transition from welfare to careers. I've watched re-entry men come back and have their lives returned. I've been a part of ESOL students' lives who finally attain their GED and watched paraprofessionals become future teachers. I come to work each day hoping that I can and do make a difference in just one person's life and hear them say, I would never have been able to do it if not for BCC and its staff. This makes everything I do each day worthwhile. Over the years, BCC has brought many people into my lives. They've walked beside me, and we've worked together to build the college. Some have walked behind me and pushed me a little bit, I have to say. And some have walked ahead of me to guide me. But mostly, we ran together and played and had fun. The amazing part of BCC for me was that it gave me lifelong friends, many of whom are sitting in this room today. Wave to me. Thank you. And my husband. So ladies, keep your eyes out, because your mate could be right there next to you. And a daughter, the apple of my eye, who grew up in the halls of BCC and is now a college student herself. And now a son from Ghana. I didn't even know where Ghana was until I was a volunteer mentor family and one of, for one of the international students, Abu Morrow. And it also gave me unbelievable staff and colleagues who've really been there to help my journey be pleasurable and successful. And it gave me memories I will treasure forever. In closing, I'd like you to make a wish for yourself. And while you do that, let me make a few wishes for you. May your journey be filled with professional success. May it give you a strong head to face the uncertain times around us. May it bring you love and laughter into your hearts and family and friends into your lives. May it give you the courage to stand up what is right and just. And may it teach you always to treat others as you would want them to treat you. May you make the world a better place. May you become the next leaders of BCC, because I can't do this any longer. <laughs> so go confidently in the direction of your dreams and live the life that you've imagined. Congratulations. Thank you, Terry. Congratulations. Next, I'd like to introduce Tom Grady, Professor of the English Department, I mean, Professor of English and Director of the Commonwealth Honors Program, who will present the Commonwealth Honors Pro Program Scholars. He will be assisted by Joanne Petrasso with the Honor Chords. Tom? Come on. A little love. Simmer down. Please be seated. <laughs> Uh, the Commonwealth Honors Program is a 12-year-old program designed by the state to recognize bona fide scholarship for those students who are exceptional both with great attainment and curiosity and scholarship. Uh, the benefits of the program are many, 
but they are introducing students to proposal-based scholarship, working with some of our most dedicated faculty, and being able to walk across this stage today with the name scholar behind them. And that's something that no circumstance can take away from them. These students have done extraordinary extra work above good grade attainment that has started their journey on the, role, on the road to making a mark on the world as an individual thinker. They've worked hard, there's been a lot of rigor, there's been a lot of hurdles, but these students are exceptional. Some of the other benefits of the program are that they poise these students for extraordinary scholarship opportunities and entrance to competitive schools. This year we have students who have been accepted to Yale, Columbia University, Penn State, Mount Holyoke, Northeastern College, and our own esteemed honors program transfers to every virtually every university and state college in Massachusetts. This is an enormous achievement for these students. Not, not least of which, uh, Bristol uh, can hold its head high to say that it is one, it is the only of the 15 community college that gives a cash gift as a payback for their last 15 credits of work here of $1,845. Now you have to give love to that. In this uh, economic climate, throw some love to that man. Love. Without further ado, by the power vested in me by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I would like to introduce to you the uh, Commonwealth Honors Pro uh, Scholars. And they are Joshua Botvin, Austin Caputo, Richard Carbonaro, Monique Dupre. Jillian F Ferreira. <laughs> Susan Fernandes. John Freitas. Adam Gonzalez. Kyle D. Gregory. Ryoko Kokuba. Robert Loggins. Lisa Orlowski. <laughs> Sophia Pappas. Sandy Pavo Pinaretta. Todd Racine, Kyle Reed, Patricia Saladino, Courtney Silva, Nicholas Staub. Andrew Tarico, and Daniel Trenholm. Congratulations. I'd now like to introduce the ever glamorous Ms. Elizabeth McCarthy, Vice President of Resource Development, and she will present the BCC Foundation Scholarships.
Good evening. The BCC Foundation is pleased to present the All USA Academic Team Scholarship, which is co-sponsored by the Phi Theta Kappa International Honor Society and the American Association of Community Colleges. Nominees are chosen for their outstanding academic achievement as well as their significant college and community service. The recipients are Christopher Carrero and Pagna Eam. The Captain James D. Crossan Scholarship is given to a student in criminal justice who has achieved academic excellence. The recipient is Julio Martinez. <laughs> this year's Charles E. Crozier Jr. Memorial Scholarship is awarded to Jenny Lynn Beauregard. <laughs> The Charles Markovich Memorial Scholarship recipients are Michael Hull, and the second recipient is Melissa Massey. The Computer Science Award for Business Solutions is awarded to Jennifer Landry. The Computer Science Award for Computer Science is awarded to Benjamin Tapol. The Computer Science Award for Community Service is presented to Michael Belanger. The Computer Science Award for Community Service and Forensics is presented to John Cabral Sr. The Computer Science Award for For Forensic Problem Solving is awarded to Rebecca Carrero. The Computer Science Award for Networking Development is awarded to Andrew Hinault. The Computer Science Award for Networking Forensics is awarded to Alan F. Cunha. The Computer Science Award for Prog Problem Solving Through Programming is presented to Terry Ott. And the second recipient is Henry Walther. The Computer Science Award for Student Support is presented to Andrew Downing. The CRC Book Award for Excellence in Chemistry is presented in recognition of outstanding scholastic merit in chemistry during their freshman year. The recipient is Cheryl Barlow. The Diana Gallant Yarkin Memorial Scholarship is given to a freshman majoring in office technologies. The recipient is Megan Parsons. The Edward Terrell Smith Memorial Scholarship is presented in recognition of high academic achievement and community service. The recipient is Candia, Candida Ross. The Helen Marie Booth Theater Award is given to students who have contributed the most to the endeavors in theater and performance. The recipient is Kyle Gregory. The recipients of the Jeanette Denning Writing Awards are first place Tyrone Smith, second place Stephanie Cabral, and third place Stephanie Fontaine. The recipient of the Jessica Raposo 05 Memorial Art Scholarship is Jennifer Avery. The Jesse 
E. Richardson Art Award is given to an art program student who has excelled in painting. The recipient is Andrew Marshall. The John G. Fonseca Memorial Scholarship is given to a non-traditional student who has demonstrated scholastic merit. The recipient is Roland Payant. The recipient of the Katia Lund International Student Award is Rocco Spinoso. The recipient of the Kenneth M. Candeas Memorial Scholarship is Robert Logans. The recipients of the Mildred Feldman Art Awards are for graphic design, Allison Rice. For interactive design, Noah Brennan. The Professor Marion Wilner Art Book Award is presented to an outstanding art transfer student who has demonstrated creativity and excellence in drawing and design. The recipient is Christopher Massey. The recipient of the Raymond J. LaVirtue Senior Scholarship is Ian Marquardt. The Robert Sherman Memorial Scholarship is given to a student who has demonstrated excellence in chemistry. The recipient is Deborah Furno. The Student Math League Competition. Award recipients are first place, round one and two, and team member Matthew Silva. Second place, round one, and team members, Kenneth Hansen and Justin Levine. Second place, round two, and team member, Justin White. Team members are Ron Fong Chen, Corey Hogg, Matthias Lalis, Benjamin Tapolt, and Jan Victoria. Congratulations to all of the scholarship recipients. I would now like to introduce Ms. Susan Bozzano, the Dean of Developmental Education. She will present the Quest Scholarship Awards for Exemplary Writing and the President Obama Volunteer Service Awards. Good evening. The BCC Foundation Quest Scholarship is given to students who have overcome academic barriers and challenges and excelled in their academic studies. The recipient is Felicia Moody. <laughs> Quest students are very successful here at BCC, and I just want to make a quick note that among all the recipients this evening, we have 25 students who have begun in the Quest program in the Center for Developmental Education. <laughs> All right, the award for exemplary student writing in the disciplines showcases the writing of a single student from each of the college's divisions. Students' work was nominated by a faculty member and judged by a committee from the respective divisions. This year's recipients are Division I, Humanities and Education, Danielle Waters Everton.
<laughs> Division two, Wendy Montella. Division four, Ashley Vanutka. And Division six, Anita DeBrito. On behalf of President Barack Obama, Bristol Community College is proud to recognize members of the college community who have successfully completed a minimum of 100 hours of community service with the President's Volunteer Service Award. This year, the college's civic engagement program has been granted authority by the President's Council on Service and Civic Participation to serve as the certifying organization for this award. This council was established in 2003 by President George W. Bush to recognize and encourage volunteerism throughout the country. The Bronze Award recipients are Tamara Bryant, <laughs> Kate Buck, <laughs> Santita Castellano. Samantha Chapman, Alan Damaris, Sean Gamash, Karen Parker. and Kim Rodericks. <clears throat> the Silver Award recipients are Jennifer Avery, <clears throat> Joseph M. Frias, Helder Lobo. <laughs> Joshua Normandin. <laughs> and Sandy Pavo Pinaretta. And we have two gold award recipients. They are Michael Hull and Eric Catelli. Oh, I did, okay. One of the silver award recipients also includes Melissa Massey. Congratulations to all of you. All right. all right, I am now pleased to introduce Dr. Michael Lennon, who will present the Norman Mailer Cape Islands Community College Writing Award. Dr. Lennon is Emeritus Vice President for Academic Affairs and Emeritus Professor of English at Wilkes University. He later chaired the Humanities Division at Wilkes and he continues to teach in the creative writing program. He is the late Norman Mailer's authorized biographer and has written and edited several books about Mr. Mailer. His latest book, co-authored with Mailer, is On God, An Uncommon Conversation. 
Dr. Lennon is currently editing Mailer's letters and researching his biography. He currently serves as an executive board member of the Norman Mailer's Writer's Colony. Dr. Lennon, will you please come forward? These are the two students. Right, and I'm going to. Time to sit, yep. and you're going to speak. Yep, okay. I am. It's a pleasure to be here. I was born in Fall River. It took me a long time to get back, and you've got a great school going here. Um, in 1946, a young man got out of the U.S. Army, and he went down to Truro, North Truro, Mass with a lot of notes, and he wrote The Naked and the Dead at the age of 23. It was published when he was 25, and thus began the long 60-year career of Norman Mailer as a writer, a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner, and so forth. Uh, three quarters of the books that he wrote were written in Massachusetts, um, in Provincetown, where he had a home and where he uh, is buried. Um, Mailer was very interested in young writers. Uh, I've read all of his letters. There are 50,000 of them, 25 million words. And I would say 15% of them are to writers. They're to the people he did not know, uh, people who read his books, wrote him a letter, and asked for advice. He answered every letter. He never failed to answer a letter from anyone, whether they were obscure, famous, overseas, uh, wherever they from, whatever kind of advice, he always answered the letters. It took him six months sometimes, but he answered every single one. He cared a great deal for writers. And after he died, uh, his family and his friends decided that they would turn his house in Provincetown into a writer's colony and establish a whole series of writers' awards. And the award we're giving tonight uh, Cape Cod and Island's Award for Nonfiction is one of those awards. There's several. Uh, the National Council of Teachers of English gives an award with the colony. Um, there's fiction awards, nonfiction awards, but this is one of the big ones, and we wanted to do it uh, with the community colleges where writers really learn how to write and where they begin their careers as writers. And I've talked to Betsy French, and she's told me about the writers that are here, and I know we have two extraordinary writers that we're going to give the awards to tonight. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say a couple of words about Mailer as a writer and what his advice was to writers. And he had some pretty good advice to writers. He thought about it a lot, and he wrote a book about it called The Spooky Art some thoughts on writing, because writing is a very spooky art. We don't know where the words come from. Uh, they just seem to come magically at times when we least expect them. But his chief advice to writers was, write, get a schedule. Don't try to write every other weekend on Saturday afternoon. Get a schedule, no matter what it is, and write for it. If you keep telling your unconscious that you're going to write at tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock, eventually your unconscious will start delivering the material. But don't make the promise and then go out and have too few many beers and decide you can't do it. Because that's sort of like leading the, leaving the soldiers in the rain all lined up and nowhere to go. Uh, your unconscious will deliver if you keep doing it. And I have to tell you uh, that it really works. I've talked to a lot of writers, and I'm a writer myself. And if you keep planning that you're going to be there in the morning, you're going to show up and you're going to write, the material will start to come, and it will work. It worked for Mailer, and it will work for you. And we need more writers in the electronic age. We need them just as much as we ever needed them before. Writers alter the, the marrow and the nerves of a country. Uh, they provide so much. We've heard Emerson quoted tonight. Um, and he was a great inspiration to Mailer. Mailer had great regard for Emerson, another great Massachusetts writer. So um, keep in mind the Norman Mailer Writers Colony. If you're ever down in Provincetown, um, stop in. It's a friendly place, and um, writers are always welcome there. Writers used to knock on the door of Mailer's house all the time. They would be afraid, they would be timid. He'd say, come on in and have a drink. 
You give them a drink, sit down, and you talk to them for two, three hours about what they were writing about. And we're trying to carry on that tradition today. Now I'd like to call up, um, uh, oh, I, I should say that, that the Norman Mailer Writers Colony, Colony is doing this in cooperation, not only with the community college, but also with the Fine Arts Work Center of Provincetown, which is a, another writer's colony, a, a venerable one, a great one, and uh, Salvatore Scabona, who is a finalist for the National Book Award, led the team of writers who uh, made the choices, who selected the two people who are getting these awards tonight, and they are Tyrone Smith and Sarah Martin. If they would please come up. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I have for you the, uh, this plaque, which is pretty heavy, All right. and this check. Thank you very much. Congratulations. We'll see you in Provincetown. All right. Thank you. Okay. Sarah, there's a check for you, and there's that award. Okay? Thank, Thank you, you and congratulations. Tyrone will be joining us in Provincetown, and he'll be taking some courses uh, down there this summer. Thank you very much. Thank President, you. thank you. Thank you very much. And I also want to recognize Professor uh, Betsy French for her great work in uh, coordinating this activity. Thank you, Professor French. Thank you, Dr. Lennon. Next, I'd like to introduce Ms. Joanne Preston, who's a Dean for Humanities and Education, who will present the first curriculum awards for the evening for Division I. Joanne? Good evening, everyone. The curriculum award is given to graduating students who are recognized for the characteristics of reliability, perseverance, and high academic quality. This award expresses the college's confidence in the recipient as he or she enters the world of business, community service, or higher education. The curriculum award recipients for the Division of Humanities and Education are for Art Transfer Fine Arts, Megan E. Hutchinson and Nicole Hawkins. <clears throat> For our transfer graphic design, Matthew Willett. For our transfer animation and motion graphics, Christopher Massey. Graphic Design Certificate, Nancy Machado. For elementary, excuse me, elementary education, Ann Curry. Soka Corn. Colleen Pavile. For liberal arts, humanities option, Larissa Johnson. For liberal arts, math and science option, Judith Morin. For liberal arts, professional option, Ryoko Kakuba. Thank you. 
Liberal Arts Theater, Artistic Option, Kyle Gregory. <laughs> Liberal Arts Theater, Technical Option, Matthew Andre. And Liberal Arts, D. Diego Diof. <laughs> Web Design Certificate, Gail Rodriguez. Congratulations to all of the recipients. I'd like to introduce Mr. Barry McKee, Professor of Criminal Justice, who will present the Curriculum Awards for Division II. Thank you, Joanne, for that introduction. Uh, she forgot the ever lovely part, but... <laughs> the, curriculum, the Curriculum Award represents Recipients, excuse me, for the Division of Behavioral and Social Sciences are for Criminal Justice, Ian T. Marcotte. <laughs> for Culinary Arts, Baking and Pastry Arts, Courtney L. Silva. and Adam Gonzales. The Thanatology Certificate, Karen Aruda. And Laurie Lowney. Congratulations to all this, these recipients. I'd like to introduce the next presenter, uh, the ever lovely uh, Ms. Phoebe Blackburn, the Dean of Business and Informational Management. She will present the Curriculum Awards for Division Three. Thank you, Professor McKee, and good evening. The Curriculum Award recipients for the Division of Business and Information Management are Tin Yat George Tao, <laughs> Computer Information Systems, Business Information Systems, Jennifer Landry, <laughs> and Stacy Panacho. Computer Information Systems, Computer Networking, Alan F. Cunha, Jr. And David Ferreira. Computer Information Systems, Computer Programming, Terry D. Ott. and Henry F. Walther. <laughs> computer Information Systems, Computer Science Transfer, Benjamin L. Tepold. <laughs> Office Administration, Medical Administrative Assistant, Zeneda Rivera. Administrative Assistant Certificate, Elizabeth Fitta. <laughs> Legal Office Assistant Certificate, Victoria Dominicetti. <laughs> and Office Support Certificate, Tamara Bryant.
This concludes the Curriculum Awards for Division Three. Congratulations to all of the recipients. <laughs> Ms. Patricia Dent, Dean of Health Sciences, will present the Curriculum Awards for Division Four. The Curriculum Awards for the Division of Health Sciences are for Clinical Laboratory Science, Victoria Pereira. For Dental Hygiene, Sandra Botello. <laughs> Kelly McGough. and Susan Warner. For nursing, Beata Ryback. For occupational therapy assistant, Karen Connell. For Medical Assisting Certificate, Jennifer Langlais. And Sandra Ponce. And for Medical Transcription, Paula Olson. Congratulations to all of the recipients. I would now like to introduce Dr. Peter Schuyler, Dean of Mathematics, Science, and Engineering, who will present the Curriculum Awards for Division Five. Thank you, Pat. You're wonderful as well. <laughs> I'd like to present the curriculum awards for the divisions of mathematics, science, and engineering. The first award for engineering technology and electromechanical option goes to Alexandre Salomeo. For engineering technology mechanical option, Ernest DuPont. For engineering technology structural option, Carlos Santos. For engineering transfer, engineering science transfer, Runfang Chen. Samantha Chapman. and Alexander Sinkovich. For general studies, Deborah Hamill Collars. And for the Applied Construction Technology Certificate, Abu Morrow. Congratulations to all the recipients. It's my distinct pleasure to uh, present the next presenter. Uh, it's a lot easier to speak before her than after her because she's a really tough act to follow. So I'm thankful to talk before her. Uh, Dr. Sarah Garrett, the Vice President of Academic Affairs. She will present the Academic Achievement awards and class valedictorian. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. See, now he's got your expectations up. 
It's a happy night, isn't it? And I have a wonderful honor right now because I have the distinct honor of being able to present the Academic Achievement Award. And the Academic Achievement Awards are granted to those students graduating with an associate's degree who have earned a 4.0 grade point average as of May 1st, 2010. A 4.0. Now you can do better than that. 4.0! That's right. Now that's phenomenal. Just to be here tonight, all of these students deserve a round of applause. Come on, everybody. That's right. The recipients earning a 4.0 are Elaine Almeida. Erwin <laughs> A. Apaza. <laughs> Come on, Erwin. <laughs> Duarte Carrero. Karen E. Connell. <laughs> Joseph Drayton, Jr. <laughs> Deborah A. Florent. Susan M. Fontaine. Todd Racine. Zachary Sinkovich. Henry F. Walther. And Patricia L. Werner. Congratulations on this extraordinary accomplishment. Let's give them all another round of applause, everyone. And now, and now, <laughs> the honor of valedictorian. Oh, yes. The honor of valedictorian is conferred upon one graduating student who demonstrates academic and service excellence. Now the valedictorian will give the final address to the students at commencement. That student represents the graduating class. <clears throat> and that student was just on this stage for earning a 4.0 average. I love him. <laughs> I just do. The class of 2010's valedictorian is Erwin A. Apaza. Woo!
That's right, enjoy your moment, Erwin. <laughs> and now, Dr. Michael Vieira, Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs, will present the Bronze Shield Awards. Mike. Thank you. I taunt you all to take a breath, relax a little bit, enjoy the moment. All of you folks in the front, turn to the person next to you and say, congratulations. You have done a tremendous job. It's been my pleasure this year to work a little more closely with the uh, student activities um, folks, so it was really uh, nice to see some familiar faces walking by, and I gotta say, some of you clean up really well. <laughs> you look pretty good out there, so I can't wait to see a graduation. The Bronze Shield Award is given to students who have provided continuous, outstanding service to a club or organization of the college. And it's really on behalf of your advisors, the faculty advisors to the clubs, and Kathy Burns, the Director of Student Activities, who works so hard to support all of uh, the activities of the clubs, and the Student Senate, who um, also oversees them. For the Anime Club, Nathan Melin. Melin. <clears throat> and Stephanie L. Keck. <clears throat> For the BCC Theater Rep, Colleen L. Kiyu. <laughs> For Club Theater, Jeffrey Thomas Griffin. For dental hygiene, Megan L. Heath. And Jennifer McPhail. For the International Club, Abu Moro. For the Medical Assisting Club, Robin L. Morissette. And Crystal Stanley. For the National Association of Legal Secretaries Club, Teresa Fodler. For the Observer, Christopher M. Wilbur. For the Rotaract Club, Jillian Zduler. In her spiffy new chair, the first time on the stage. Is that the new chair? Sorry, that's the old chair. And Joseph M. Frias. For Skills USA, Courtney Silva. And for the Visual Arts Club, Samantha E. Rabbit. Well, 
like to once again extend congratulations to all of the Bronze Shield Award recipients. Our next presenter is Steve Ozug, Vice President of Students and Enrollment Management. He'll present the Student Advocate, Silver Shield, and Scepter and Scroll Awards. Thank you, Michael. Before we get into this, I just want to point out something to the audience here. As we're reading these names and as we're getting into these uh, high-level awards that the college gives out, I really want you to pay attention to the names because these truly are the leaders of the future. When you think about all the places in the world that need good, caring, decent, honest people who will lead us and inspire us and will take this country and this world to better places, these are some of the very people who are gonna be doing that. And I can honestly tell you that in all the years I've been here, I have never worked with such a group of students like this. There are so many absolutely incredible student leaders in this group tonight who just give and give and give and I know will make this world a better place. So remember these names as you hear them tonight because you will, you will hear th about them again in the future. First of all, it is my pleasure to announce this year's recipient of the Student Advocate Award. This award is given to an individual for rendering outstanding contributions and support to his or her peers. This year's recipient is Abu Morrow. <laughs> the next award is the Silver Shield Award. And this is given to students who have made significant contributions to BCC and are recognized for the, their outstanding service of consistent high quality to the college. And I would ask the recipients, as you receive your award, to please remain on stage to be honored as a group. This year's recipients are, and again, remember some of these names, Erwin A. Apaza. <clears throat> Kate Buck. And the ever lovely, more lovely, I'm sorry, others, more lovely than all of those before her, Jillian Bazdula. <laughs> Jane Chapin. <laughs> Joseph A. Drayton, Jr. <laughs> Panya Eam. <clears throat> Helder LeBeau. <laughs> Melissa J. Massey. <laughs> Joshua M. Normandin. Alexander N. Sapajan. And Christopher M. Wilbur. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Silver Shield Award recipients.
Congratulations and thank you. The next award is the Scepter and Scroll Award. It is the most prestigious award given by the college, and I make that distinction given by the college because there'll be another award after this that's given exclusively by the president. But this is the most prestigious award given by the college. Membership in the Scepter and Scroll Society is given to students who have provided consistent and outstanding contributions of leadership and service to Bristol Community College. The recipients are installed in perpetuity in the Scepter and Scroll Society. As you receive your award, please again remain on stage to be recognized as a group. And this year's list of truly outstanding leaders starts with Santita Castellano. <laughs> Yuri Diarujo. <clears throat> Michael W. Hull. <laughs> Ryoko Kokuba. <laughs> Sandy M. Paveo Pinaretta. and Todd Racine, who is not here this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Scepter and Scroll recipients. Congratulations. And our final award, for, for our final award, I would like to call up the President of Bristol Community College, Dr. John Sprague. Thank you, Steve. The President's Award, known as the Mason Shield, is presented each year to a graduate who has rendered the highest quality service to the college and who has demonstrated outstanding leadership. The name of each recipient is inscribed on a plaque which is located permanently at the college. And this year, the recipients are Santita F. Castellano. Michael W. Hull. <laughs> and Ryuko Kabuko. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mason Shields Award winners for 2010. Tia, Michael, and Ryuko. Congratulations. <laughs> And now back to David Tracy. <laughs> Thank you, President Sprega. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? Fantastic. Congratulations again to everybody. <clears throat> I want to thank again all the recipients, all the presenters tonight for this evening. And congratulations again. We really salute you. It's just a fantastic achievement. Uh, this includes the awards presentation, but it's not over, so we have more for you. And now it's time to start celebrating some more. So please join us in the Commonwealth College Center for a festive reception in, honor, in your honor, prepared by Chef Carissimo and the students in the Culinary Arts Program with musical entertainment provided by 
to Craig Trio, Conroy Trio. And thank you again, and, and thank, thank everybody for helping me for tonight, and have a wonderful evening. We'll see you over in the, in the Commonwealth College Center. Thank you. Thank you.